experiences. Hi guys, in this video I want to discuss what Laura has said about the Sonar Live data she viewed along with Peter Folding and it is revealed more than I thought it would. She discussed this in her latest video released on her Crime Analyst YouTube channel some hours ago. One question I'll start with is when Laura asked why did Lancashire Police brief the media about Peter Folding and what he was going to claim? I think this was to reduce the amount of stress caused to the family and to reduce the amount of online speculation. If Lancashire Police did think Peter's sonar images were of a branch from a tree, then why would they just let Peter run around willy-nilly doing what he wants? Lancashire Police might think it's just a stick, but it's Peter Folding who is claiming the images he has are of Nicola's body. I think Peter Folding has lost sight of Nicola Bully being a person, and he has locked on to finding a target. Speaking of questions, another question bugging us all is why did Peter Folding take the route he did? Peter Folding has connections with Sean Atwood. But for some reason, the biggest YouTube channel about true crime was bypassed. Instead, a much more humble channel was used to spread the message. With a few loyal followers, his channel managed to pull a great interview, and it was clear other forces were helping along the way. With the expensive studio equipment and lighting gadgets, the interview was very much a strategic action, and there seems to have been many pawns in the game. But moving back to Laura, Laura says. Peter Folding was happy to show the images without any hesitation. In Laura's latest release, she shows a video of Peter Folding recording his sonar equipment and it shows him going over the river and it shows a small bit of footage. Laura said he put the live data up and what I saw first of all from the live data was a boat moving along the river on one side and the actual image in the centre of the screen. She goes on to say, Peter orientated me and described what I was seeing on screen so firstly I could understand this was the boat. But what I don't understand is Laura is a clever woman so I find it hard to understand why she didn't research a sonar image so she could check independently. Why did she need Peter to explain something that took me and probably you minutes to Google? Laura goes on to say, Tracking towards the bench, and then approximately 75 metres away from the bench, there was a dark shadow. Now I could see the dark shadow, but I didn't really know what I was looking at on the screen, as in it's a dark shadow, and I had it up on high definition. I've got lots of monitors here, and the high definition 27 inch monitor, and it doesn't matter what you actually view these images on. And I asked him lots of questions, as I always do, about what he was showing me. At this point, Laura said she asked Peter lots of questions, but a lot of these questions, again, could have been Googled, or she could have used her many connections and got some independent advice. Please remember, Laura is an expert in stalking. She is not an expert in side sonar images or live data, and Laura has had to lean directly onto the person who is making these claims, which would be Peter Folding, for any information about the item she is analysing. And I think this might contaminate her view. She goes on to say, I was looking at the time date stamps and it explained the shadows are only created if there is an item or an object. For example, if there's nothing there, there's no shadow. So it's not possible for it to be a shadow on the screen and literally be nothing as was stated in the report that it was nothing. Now Laura seems to push the narrative that the police are trying to cover up Peter Folding finding anything, yet it wasn't a COP report that said the sonar image was nothing. In fact, they both said the images were shadows of a branch. It was a diver that said it was nothing, but this was told to Peter through a third party, as he claimed in the Q&A on the Break the Ice channel, which aired in December last year. But if you think about it, so the diver, this sonar would actually be nothing. Remember, Laura and Peter are describing a shadow, and they intermittently change this to a body. But overall, this is live data of a shadow. 
The shadow accounting to the COP report was from a branch. But what Peter fails to mention is that the diver cannot see a shadow in the water from the sonar. It doesn't imprint. So when he checked the location of a shadow to see if there was a physical target, he clearly saw nothing because he could not see the shadow and a shadow is not a physical object or a target. Laura goes on to say, I could see the actual outline of what looked like a person and a person looked like they were lying on their side with their knees pulled into their stomach and their bottom raised so it was like they were kneeling on their side and their arms in front of them but on their side. This to me is where the lines blur into confusion. What I feel Laura is describing here makes no sense. So the whole description is basically on the knees and in a praying position with the arms outstretched and on their side. So does this imply Laura saw the shadow of both arms or both legs or both? The arms I can understand, but wouldn't the legs have been covered by that long coat? And mentioning Nicola's coat, why did Laura not see the hood or the bottom of the coat? Why did she not see Nicola's hat? Why did she not see her wellies? It is honestly like she is describing a naked body rather than a person with multiple layers of clothing. And we know for a fact that Nicola was found with her clothing on. I think Laura has got a decent education and she should have used that to help her research sonar images. If I can do it, anyone can. I'm honestly confident that this is just a shadow and not a viable target for any diver to obtain. And I don't understand why Laura is furthering that. She goes on to say, Peter changed the image colours like the actual outline of the image. And when it was outlined in white or in a yellow gold or blue, it was even more clear to me and it really popped. And I can tell you, my interpretation of what I saw without Peter telling me was that it was looked like a female body and I know the ramifications of saying that and I questioned him and I challenged him. But I don't understand how she can challenge him when she knows nothing about sonar images. I tried my best to learn as much as I could about sonar images so I could challenge him correctly. Why couldn't Laura do that? I think how Laura describes Peter describing the live data to her, it kind of reminds me of when my niece brings me a picture that she's drawn. And I'm trying my best to say whatever she drew looked brilliant, but I have no clue what it is. And so I scoot around the subject to get an answer. And I get her to show me the best bits of the picture so I can understand what I'm actually seeing. But moving back on to what Laura says, she says he told me since he had measured the length of the body and this is where they change it from a shadow to a body just like that and the measurements were 1.61 meters in total which is the same height as Nicola now that's very distressing to learn and I do agree with Laura this is very distressing to learn and I'm going to address that bit of information and how it doesn't change a thing for me at all you see this description that we started out with was a shadow, and in the space of just a few seconds, the shadow was turned into a body and measured. But if by what Laura was saying at the beginning and what Peter said in the first interview on the Break the Ice channel, they were both looking at a shadow. So it should be that Peter measures a shadow and not a body. Laura goes on to talk about notes and sketches that Peter provided her, and she puts these on the screen. I think the sketches and the hand-drawn maps are a bit of overkill or insufficient because no one is disputing if Peter Folding and his team searched the river properly or not and no one is disputing in which part he was in. If the public cannot and should not see these images and the public are only judging by the evidence backing up the image. That's like me showing you the metadata for an image. Metadata is basically all the information the computer can gather about the production of that image. It can tell you when that image was created and on what device, and even if any changes have been made. But the metadata does not actually describe the image. To see the changes made to the image, you would have to look at the image itself to judge those changes. And again, 
Laura knows nothing about side sonar data or live data, so how can she judge that? Laura goes on to say the data is date stamped to the 7th of February and the time of the sonar, and this was also the hot zone, and Peter really wanted to search the hot zone from the beginning. And it was a location to the bench where Nicola, uh, well, the phone had been found. And some distance also from where she was found. And this is a hot zone. I think Peter and Laura are trying to imply that the police underwater dive team and the recovery teams did not want Peter to find Nicola. But if that is the case, why did he give in to Peter and let him search that area on his own on the second day he was there? Don't you think it would be very risky to use this expert with amazing equipment that is supposedly better than the dive teams and put him right where Peter is claiming the body was concealed? Because that is what this accusation is. If what Peter is saying is true, it is not how long they try to search or the lack of the search of underwater divers and the recovery teams as well. It's the concealment of a body which is a very serious crime. This isn't just an accusation of lazy diving or nasty police officers. Peter Folding is claiming these teams knew Nicola's body was there. Otherwise, why would he be constantly banging on about not being able to search on the first day that he arrived, which was over a week after Nicola had disappeared? He claims they denied him the opportunity to recover the body Yet the College of Policing says he agreed to this prior to finding a target. Laura then shows a hand-drawn map from Peter Folding and she says that North West Police Dive Team actually said that that target was negative. I think the notes Laura is talking about actually support the police, where she shows the result was negative. At no point have I seen anything to suggest that the target was nothing more than a shadow as we know shadows can look like anything, and so can trees. So while I'm saying this, I'll overlay a few images for reference. Laura says, Peter and his team were relying on what Lancashire Police and also the North West Police Dive Team found, and that they were told they weren't allowed to dive. He did ask, however, but they carried on with their searches. But this was an area that he wanted to go back to, and rescan later and just to double check. But what Laura is forgetting, that Peter Folding had already gone back and checked the night before, when the media and the dive teams went home. So why would he need to check a third time? Wasn't the second time enough opportunity for Peter Folding to do his job and scan it properly? Now you may think I'm being harsh when I say Peter should do his job, But don't forget, this is a service he offered. This service has been reflected many times in the news and it was unusual to see Peter Folding speak to the press. I don't think the family were expecting a second-rate service or to be part of the Peter Folding show. I think the family wanted the same service that would have been offered to anyone who was fortunate enough to afford his service. I do also wonder, did Peter Folding explain to the family that they wouldn't receive the same service because this one was free of charge? Did Peter Folding really think because they were not paying he could go on a free-for-all with Mark William Thomas and the press for an image boost? I think he used his free-of-charge business to take advantage of these families. Peter Folding claims to have not signed a non-disclosure agreement, so he knows full well He had the perfect opportunity to get to the front of the newspapers and he took it with both hands. Laura goes on to say that Peter Folding also showed her what trees look like as shadows. She said, because I was interested in that and how do you differentiate what a tree or what you know underwater plantation or debris, but he showed me images of trees and bodies. Well, we all knew the amount of limbs Nicola had which was normal, but a branch can have a number of limbs. Sometimes these are sporadic, and sometimes these can grow in a mathematical sequence. But one thing is for sure, 
They can look like body parts, like I said before. I think a big word these so-called experts seem to be forgetting is the word pareidolia. We have all seen something that looks like something else entirely. Laura goes on to say, she can only go on to say what she saw and what she knows, but she can't show you the images herself, and that's due to copyright reasons. She also says this would be distressing for the family, and she's told this to Peter firmly. She goes on to say Peter Folding is in a double bind right now and cannot release the images until the family have seen them and are able to give a green light for that to happen. And here again is another plug for the family to do action. I thought this was nasty to be honest and callous. Peter Folding and Laura know that it was a college of policing who had to inform the family of Peter's findings. The family were blindsided and pushed cold into the press, again without any heads up, but luckily Lancashire Police have stepped up their game. Their protection of Paul Ansel and the family have majorly improved. The tactics they're using now is doing so much better. And I think Lancashire Police have handled Peter Folding brilliantly. Laura goes on to say, she just wants to mention in closing, that she did foreshadow that Peter Folding would become the spob, the single point of blame. But he's not just a he's a spob, because actually there are multiple spobs, and the review, this review, should have been about Lancashire Police, and what they did or didn't do, and trying to improve and learn the lesson, so Lancashire Police and all police forces could learn and get better at what they do. So this never happens again. That should be the focus, not Peter Folding and the College of Policing team, in my opinion, should have focused on Lancashire Police. But I don't agree with Laura. Why would they do that if Peter's claims are true? Ain't all this about proving Peter's sonar images? So would a thorough investigation like Peter is asking for be beneficial? I don't think solely laying the blame on Lancashire Police is fair at all. Remember, there are many parties involved in this case, including the police, search and recovery, the Coast Guard, the fire service, third parties, the media, social media and the public. Solely focusing on Lancashire Police would just be an attack on them and would not provide true answers, but I guess this is what this is all about, as Laura goes on to say. Because the ultimate issues all lie with Lancashire Police for their bad management of this non-scene, non-crime that they called it. And nothing seen here situation that for me is a leadership issue. Lancashire Police were waiting in my opinion for Nicola's body to reappear. And when it didn't, and when the people were playing, we are the people, we are paying close attention to what they are saying and what they weren't doing and what they weren't saying. I personally believe this is just a hit piece again on Lancashire Police. Laura completely forgets the media's response, or just plainly ignores it, and doesn't seem to hold them accountable. But Laura is part of the mainstream media, so to me, this is just another attempt at covering up mainstream media's responsibility into how they publish stories and scared the public and Nicola's family. Laura says there wasn't a proactive investigation and a week went by and they did nothing. They did nothing to check the CCTV. They didn't treat it as an investigation. She also says we know that Nicola's family lost confidence in the police. But she also fails to mention that it seems like that family also lost a lot of confidence in Peter Folding. She goes on to say, it was because of their inaction that the family lost confidence. They started reaching out to other people, and I'm saying that very clearly, says Laura. The public lost confidence in the police. She said it's because of the Sarah Everard case, and lots of other cases where women have disappeared, and the police haven't investigated. But remember, they did catch the person that did get Sarah Everard. She said the public lost confidence in the zeitgeist is important here too and that Lancashire police try and distract and deflect. 
they call a press conference, they tell us that Nicola was high risk. Then they share these specific vulnerabilities, which they don't clear with the family, which they actually did. Laura saying that is untrue. It was discussed with the family. It was some of the wording that wasn't discussed. She said they're terrible victim blaming statements and they failed to engage with their own in-house experts on the media and their own in-house PR press officers who could have helped them and they didn't consult with them. They ignored the SI and they tried to blame the media and Peter Folding for their own failings and shortcomings. And she also says I'm not having it. I'm just making that clear. But it's not understandable what Laura's going to do. Laura goes on to say, One final observation is that Peter Folding did take part in the review and he has reflected and he has said he wished he had never spoken out to the media and that's on him. He does say that he did say Lancashire Police never told him not to but he regrets it greatly and he'll learn from this. She says that's important. She also says, what I'm not hearing or seeing is Lancashire Police taking any responsibility for any of these issues. And what I'm not hearing is any more of Laura's video. I'm going to stop reading Laura's transcript now because that is enough. The College of Police in Review, what's the accountability you were looking for, Laura? That was the whole point. Really, what does accountability look like? Is it admitting the mistakes and learning from them and being open and honest? Or is it grovelling at your feet until you are told you have apologised enough? Maybe Peter Folding should have taken some accountability. But the only bit that we got, the only little bit, was I shouldn't have talked to the press. Well, I don't think that's good enough. I think Laura really goes in on Lancashire Police. But I can understand why Laura is doing this. You see, Laura has made claims of her own. And her claims of stalking were rejected by the courts. And Laura says this cop report should have focused just on the police. Because I believe Laura is not interested in the truth about Nicola. She, along with Peter Folding and many others, just want to discredit the police. Because they have been discredited by the police themselves. So this tells me that Laura has bad blood with the police and to me this is a reason and the motive for Laura to join this fight to further discredit the police. It is clear that images are shadows and knowing this now it confirms to me the diver did find nothing and with Peter's target I don't think they concealed the body. I think the mainstream media are egging on the police cover-up theory without actually being specific to what they are alluding to. But why are there many attempts by discredited experts and ex-employees of the police force itself trying their hardest to discredit the police? What is really going on? Are these all media plants designed to make you question the police so the public always have a need for the mainstream media. Nah, that couldn't be it, could it? Overall, I'm disappointed with Laura, the crime analyst's description of the side sonar live data. Don't forget, shadows are a 2D image. They are not 3D. And also, to be able to say that it's a female body, without actually saying what it was that was female about it, just doesn't make sense to me. And it doesn't make sense why she didn't research sonar images or get some independent advice. Unless it was just to discredit the police altogether. And that's exactly what I believe Laura is doing. Thank you very much for watching.